Two years ago, almost to the day, I was sitting on a bathroom floor here in the city of Marrakesh and crying. I had taken an opportunity that had been offered to me from an amazing organization called Access Health International. Um, I was 24. I'd finished my master's um, from the London School of Economics in development and globalization. And I wasn't even sure that I really believed in development. It seemed pre-neo-colonial, it seemed ineffective, and I wasn't sure, knowing that I wanted to be useful in the world, how I was going to do that. But Access Health offered me some seed funding and sent me to Morocco. I had no idea what I was going to do. The only mission that I had was to improve eye care in the country. So this is the eye care problem in the world. There are 285 million visually impaired people in the world. That's bigger than the population of Brazil. 39 million are blind, so that's bigger than the population of Morocco. Being visually impaired obviously has a huge economic impact, an emotional impact, a, commun a community impact. It stops the artisan from, from doing his work. It stops the teacher from teaching, the student from studying. It's a challenge. The good news is 80% of visual impairment is curable. And we can obviously understand what that means for the person who could be cured. But those people aren't getting the help they need because the challenge is huge. The solutions exist. A $3 pair of glasses, a 10-minute cataract surgery. I've stood in operating theatres all over the world now, and I've watched cataract surgeries being done, and it still feels like magic to me. 10 minutes, and you let the light back in. So there are, when I joined Access Health, I knew and had studied um, an amazing example of innovation and success of problem solving in India. So I want us all to travel together to India now, to the rural south. 40 years ago, a man called Dr. B started an organization called Aravind. He had no money, he mortgaged his house, he built an 11-bed hospital, and his aim was to improve access to quality eye care to the poor. 40 years later, they are the biggest eye care providers in the world. They do 3 million outpatient consultations a year, 300,000 cataract surgeries. They are financially independent, no charity. They're sustainable. And most incredibly of all, they provide 60% of their services for free to the poor. I knew about this. It's an amazing thing. But they're very busy people. So there's the solution sitting in India. How do we share it with the world? We know that solutions exist. But actually, why does a child die of malaria every minute? We have nets, we have medicine. Because we can't spread the solution. This is the biggest challenge in global health right now. And that's really what I do. Here I was in Morocco, knowing about what's happening in India. And I, was, I arrived and I had to start from zero. So I visited hospitals all over the country to learn about what were the issues here. Because however much Aravind have come up with a global solution, they're applying it in their local context. So here I was trying to figure out what are the problems here, why are people not getting the care they need. And I was sitting and having all these meetings with eye surgeons and policy makers and people in the Moroccan government, and I was getting really frustrated because it's almost impossible in an hour to explain how Aravin does what it does, even less possible in an 18-minute TED talk. <laughs> and I was getting really frustrated and I, and I called the president of my organization and I said, why isn't there a manual? Like, why doesn't a guide exist that I could just give to people and say, this is how they do it? Because an innovation isn't just an innovation, this magical solution. It's built upon hundreds and thousands of smaller innovations, processes, protocols, human resources. 
So I was complaining and feeling challenged. And he turned around and said, well, write it. So I did. I spent evenings and weekends, let's not forget I was doing a full-time job. I was setting up the organization here and we had projects that were beginning. Um, and I had all the Indian research and I was learning a huge amount about how it really works. What's the detail? I traveled to Kenya, to Ethiopia, and to Guatemala to see other hospitals that were trying to implement those Arabian changes. And the thing is, is there are passionate people all over the world trying to do good in their communities. That is the bright side. But they're busy, they don't have time to learn, and they have huge challenges on their hands, real, everyday, physical, financial challenges. I wanted to understand how they could overcome this. So I started by dividing out the innovations into chapters. So the first and the most clear to me, and the thing that honestly I have learned through this journey, is that organizational culture is the most important thing. You need a leader who has a vision and a mission, but he needs to know how to share that with his team. From the security guard, to the maid who's cleaning, to the eye surgeon, they need to understand why and what they're doing. And the moment that you have a really clear vision and mission, you can never have a, a true problem again because everything that you design, everything that you set up will be in line with that. You will always find a way because it's so clear. We want to provide high quality, low cost eye care to those who need it. In the case of Aravind, the high quality was incredibly important. That's what keeps people coming back. They have lower infection rates than the UK. So I put these chapters together, and I was learning, and I, I've got to be honest, I had a huge amount of self-doubt. I was 26, and why was I the right person to be sharing this? I'm not an eye surgeon. I'm not, who am I to share this? Surely it should be the pioneering eye surgeon who invented the cataract surgery that can cost $35 to bring someone's sight back. I had an epiphany in Ethiopia. I was there for research for, research for the book, and I, I'd been in Kenya before, I'd had an amazing experience. I'd really seen the reality of what it is to see people fighting, but to have processes in their hands help real structure and real solutions to the challenges they were facing. But in Ethiopia, I'd spent a couple of days there, and I was, I was, I wasn't sure what I was doing there. I was, I was looking around and I got it and I could see the challenges, but it felt like a huge weight of responsibility. How do I answer to the challenges that this man has? An amazing doctor who'd gone back to his rural community in the north of Ethiopia, and he was actually incredibly productive. He was doing 5,000 cataract surgeries a year by himself, which is a huge amount. The average in the UK is like around 500. <laughs> and I sat, uh, finally he gave me some time and we sat down, just him and me, in a room, alone, a couple of chairs, my tape recorder, and he started telling me stories. And then there was a moment where he looked at me and he said, I read a study a year ago. We were talking about why he'd, he wanted to learn from Aravind, why he wanted to learn from this Indian system. And he said, I read a study that showed that 50% of people who've had the cataract operation in East Africa are still blind. And I, I could see that this was huge. Imagine, you've, you've battled, you've done 5,000 surgeries a year, you believe you're making a difference, and then you realize that maybe half of those are still blind. And he said that was the moment that I knew I needed help, and, and he'd gone and he'd worked with Aravind, and he was crying, and I cried too. And I was crying because I could feel, I could feel the, the real human effort and challenge that he had in his hands. But I also was crying because it was so hopeful. He was getting the help. He was putting these systems in place. They were working. And I also finally realized what my role was in all of this. 
I suddenly realized I have a part to play, which is that there are these innovations happening all over the world. They always have been, but we're in a new paradigm for development. We are no longer thinking of the poor South, poor Africa, poor Asia. They're coming up, and they always have been coming up with solutions. The challenge now and the opportunity is globalization. We can share, we have these networks, we can help each other, but they need a bit of support. So practitioner to practitioner training and practitioner to practitioner engagement and support make all the difference. We have the solutions, how do we spread them? And with me for my book, I realized I can do this. I can share all the stories that I'm hearing, but also the boring stuff, the protocols. The, I, I go into materials, technology, iBanks, research, financial management, all the stock management, all the little things that actually Aravin has worked on, Aravin has found solutions to. And now you can see them mushrooming these clinics all over the world. In Guatemala, they've been going for 10 years and they provide 50% of their care to the poor for free. This is what I've learned. I'm at the beginning of my journey. I'm young. I still occasionally, two years later, sit on bathroom floors and cry. It's really hard. But by learning from each other, by finding methods to share and spread, we can actually solve real problems in a sustainable way. We've moved away from the charity paradigm. We need to set up systems, and we need to set up systems that work. Thank you.